The Beginner's Guide to Plumbing. Y'all have heard me talk about why it is good to get into the trades. Today, I'm gonna give you some information that'll tell you number one, how to do it. And if you hang around to the end and I show you the numbers, it's gonna blow your mind, but you might decide getting into the trades is smarter than going to college. Before we get started, I wanna let you know this video is brought to you by Ferguson. Now we teamed up with Ferguson because of the great things they are doing for the plumbing industry. So if you wanna learn more about Ferguson, make sure to click on the link below. So what I wanna to talk to you about is when you decide to get in the trades, remember this first, you need an education. Whether you go to college or the trades, you're gonna to need to graduate high school or get a GED. I quit high school in the middle of my junior year. Big mistake. But luckily for me, I got into plumbing and realized how much I liked it. So when a pretty girl said, hey, I could never marry a guy that didn't graduate, I went back to high school and graduated with my class. Now, I'm really glad I am. She's not around, but plumbing still is. Now, after you get out of high school, while your friends are going off to college to accrue student debt, you, on the other hand, have an opportunity here. You can do a couple of different things. You can go to technical school, or you can join the union, or you can just become an apprentice and learn open shop. Now, I'm gonna throw some numbers at you later that are really gonna surprise you, and I do a cost comparison, trades, versus college. Now, I taught in the union, so I'm familiar with those numbers and their pay structure, so we'll talk about that. But if you're open shop, you still have an opportunity here. You can literally just go to work for a plumbing company as an apprentice. Now, I did that. I actually came up working with the older brothers of my good friend, and that's what got me into the trades. So I stuck with it. Luckily for me, I learned from some great plumbers. If you're in open shop and you realize, you know what, some of these plumbers I work with, I don't think I'm learning much, you may wanna check into the United Association or PHCC or somebody that does some kind of training program to where you can actually learn a systematic way. Meaning you start out at the basics, you work your way up. It is really a good training program and it's a good way to learn. Now, another good thing about the trades compared to college is when you go to college, you're actually paying for every year. During that time, while you're going to trade school, or if you're going to trade school, you're actually getting paid. You earn while you learn. So when you're in trade school, literally you go to school a couple of nights a week while school is going on. So let me explain that. While your friends are in college, you're actually working during the day that's the earn while you learn plan. And at night, a couple of nights a week, you're gonna to go to school for three or four hours. Now, this is really good because you get to relax and learn in a classroom environment, meaning you've got instructors that hopefully have been trained to teach the things that they do. And the cool thing about it, you're in there with other students that are at the same level that you're at. So learning in a training program is really a pretty cool deal. Like I said though, if you're going to college, you're paying to go to college. Now you may be able to have a part-time job to give you spending money or something like that, but while you're in trade school, you're getting paid a full-time job, hourly rate, maybe even overtime. If they're working late on nights, you don't have school or the weekends. So you could even make more than the numbers I'm gonna talk about later. Look, it's up to you. You can do whatever you wanna do and learn however you wanna learn, but make a decision based on knowledge. Don't just go to college because somebody told you you need to. There's a lot of successful people in the trades, not even company owners, just people that have made a good living from being a plumber, an electrician, a roofer, whatever it is. There's opportunity out there for you to do good even if you don't go to college. Do you wanna find a way to do it? All you've gotta do is learn your way up. Get out of whatever it is you're in and learn that you can improve your value by improving your education. So maybe it is just getting a job as an apprentice. Maybe it is going to trade school. If you're already a journeyman, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and tell me, how did you do it? Did you go through a trade school? Did you go through a training program, a, a technical college? Or did you just get a job as an apprentice and learn the trades that way? Hands on. It's not a bad way to learn. Now what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you about some numbers. So what I did, I took a base salary. Right now, union scale in my area is about $35 an hour. So I took that and cut it in half because 
a first year apprentice starts out at 50%. The second half of the year, he goes to 55. So what I did, I literally put together a scale and look, y'all are probably better at Excel than I am. I mean, I didn't go to college or anything, but I put together an Excel spreadsheet and started it out at 17.50 an hour and gave 10% raises the first three and a half years. Now, the reason I do that in the union, and that's what I'm basing this on, it may be different where you're at, it may be different open shop, but here in the North Texas area, this is what I based it on. So what I did is I took 17.50, gave 5% each half of the year for the first three years, 5% raise the first of the fourth year, and then kept it that way through the fifth year. That's when you get out of school and you become a journeyman. So now that journeyman is at about $35 an hour and he's gonna get about a 5% cost of living raise every year. It may be a little bit more some years, it may be a little bit less, but it's right around 5%. So that's what I put in. So literally, you take an apprentice starting out at $17.50 an hour, then five years later, they're making 35. By the time they've put 35 years in, which in the union is a full pension, by the time they put in 35 years, at only a 5% increase, believe it or not, they're up to $150 an hour. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but man, for an old plumber with no education, I did the math. Yeah, it adds up. So here's the deal. A plumber starting out as an apprentice in the first year and then putting in 35 years is gonna make a total of $5,376,000 and some change. Not a bad gig. Now, let's go over to the college student, the one that chose to go to college. College education probably averages about, what I could find, $125,000 to $150,000 for a four-year degree. So, let's cut that down. Let's just say it's just $100,000. Some of you may go to community college first, then you may finish out later at a bigger college. It's a popular way to go. I know a lot of people that have done it. Good for them. Get their basics done, then go get the main things done. So. Here's the deal. You come out with a four-year degree, and say you start at $40,000 a year. Not a bad way to start. And since you went to college, I'm gonna give you a little bit more credit. Instead of a 5% raise every year, how about 7.5%? Not a bad gig. So your $40,000 a year is probably salary. And that's kind of what I'm basing it on with a 7.5% increase per year. I gotta tell you, that's a pretty good increase. I know most people normally get 3 to 5%, but since you went to college, I'm gonna give you a little extra. So here's the deal. The apprentice or you, either one, work till the age of 53. The reason I picked that, after five years of training in the union and then getting out and working, putting on a total of 35 years in the union, here's the deal, he'd be 53. So I based yours on the same. Four years of college and then working till the age of 53, but your raises are even better. At the age of 53, 36 years after leaving school, literally, you would make $4,762,000. Not a bad gig. I agree. But remember, we talked about the plumber a while ago. He made $5,376,000. Nothing wrong with that either. The difference is the plumber's going to make $613,760 more than your college degree because what I did is I subtracted $25,000 a year the first four years. You may say, well, look, Roger, I may get more than 7.5% in raises. That's fine. You're going to pay interest on this loan when you pay it back. Now, what's the big kicker here? If you're in the union or a company that has a pension plan, and yes, the plumber's union has one, you're also gonna get to draw a retirement that your employer has been putting up for you for all these years. I don't know what you've got worked out with your college degree, maybe you've got a 401k. There's a lot of great opportunities there, but some of that you're gonna have to put up to match. Look, I'm just asking you to compare apples to apples. If you go to college or if you go to trade school, look at what the value is when you get out. So like I said, guys, look, if you're already a journeyman, let me know. Did you go to trade school? Did you go open shop or did you go to college? Because I know plumbers that actually have college degrees, now they're in the trades. Anyway, let me know how it worked out for you and what you think. Once again, thank you to ferguson.com. And guys, look, go to ferguson.com and see what they have to help you in the trades. If you're a plumber, they do a lot to help plumbers and their companies always do better. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.